right? Our next move. In the Gospel of St. Mark chapter 5, I'm going to read into you today. And they came over to the other side of the sea into the country of the Galileans. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him, no, none could change. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the feathers broken in pieces by it. Neither could any man take him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Verse number six. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou art spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, Say, My name is Legion, for we are many. He besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And for where Jesus gave them leave. In other words, Jesus gave them permission. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. What's what the result here now? And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. In other words, they committed the suicide. And they fed the swine, and they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country. See how fast this is spread? And they went now to see what it was that was done. And they come and they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil. And the legion, the devil and the legion, sitting, watchers. And clothed what? And in his right mind, and they were. My goodness, I read that, that I still don't. I don't preach that. That's the way I can not preach that right there. My goodness. They were afraid. They saw him sitting, clothed, and in his right mind. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil. And also not sitting in the swine. So, so they I had the man of the swine. I don't know which one was more important for that. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast of territory. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil, this is how they know, prayed him that he might be with him. How be as Jesus suffered him not. But say unto him, Go home to thy friends. And tell them how great things the Lord had done for them, for thee, and had and had, had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in the Acts how great things Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed or manful. Father, we thank you for your sacred word. Touch some life, we pray, a strong anointing. That will destroy the yokes this morning. Whatever tormenting spirits, whatever has lingered from generation to generation, we ask of you, God, touch us. Teach us today 
And whatever we ask for personal revival, we ask God and it will transfer into a corporate revival and then an organizational uh, revival and then a national revival. Our communities will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, so this uh, chapter, hold on. <laughs> I'm about to, uh, you know, God is speaking. And I look at the text, and there's so many. Now, I, if you get hungry quickly, only if you stay to the end, I, I'm giving you a disclaimer. I have 13 slides. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take me, but somewhere along the line, we're going to do this. All right, so Jesus. The Gospel of St. Mark. Now, when you look at these authors, some of them write different perspective. I'm going to take you to Matthew, I think it's 8 and verse 29, one scripture there. They give different uh, view of what is happening, right? So, so Mark, he's a man, he writes about Jesus taking action. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. He takes action. Right? So Mark, if you read the gospel, and I want to encourage you, because I'm a, a Bible reader. I, I read Bible every single day. I want to encourage you, if you want to learn the gospels very quickly, read the gospel of St. Mark. He goes straight to the point. Dr. Luke will give you a uh, physician perspective. How many of you ever talk with people and, and they talk a whole lot and then they come to the point? Yeah, you know that? Mark says, you know, I, I ain't going to you know, man, we love to get straight to the point. Mark says, you know, I ain't giving you all about the theology and where he came from. I'm just going to tell you how powerful Jesus is. Somebody say, we serve a God who is all powerful. Amen. Amen. So, the heart for the heartless, in fact, this month is the month of the sacred hearts, if you take taking notes. So, somewhere along the line, I just want to throw that in for you. This is, uh, I could have called the message that this is Jesus having a heart for the heartless. When the kingdom of God invades our world, you can write that down. When the kingdom invades our world or the hack attack. So the first thing I want you to know, the kingdom of God comes to us. That look how Jesus uh, will brace a storm to come and find this man. My goodness. Prior to chapter 5, he goes through a storm. And I love that about Jesus, that he's God enough, he's big enough to silence the storms. And you know that the wind and the waves still has, he still has power over the wind and the waves. Somebody say that to me, Jesus. He has power over the wind. And the waves. In other words, uh, when the seas uh, go wild, he has enough power to tame the sea. Somebody say, God can tame it. Yeah, say, God can tame it. Say, I have the power to tame the beast. Amen. And I reveal to you what the beast is because the storms. Have rose up against Jesus in the boat. And all of them said, Master, we perish. Master, he's a master. Somebody said, He's my master. He's a master over the storms and the wind and the waves. And, and I love how Jesus says, And they came over to the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gandharal, Gandharines. In other words, Jesus just come through a storm. And Gadara is a place of elevation. In other words, 
that Jesus uh, is blessing uh, uh, my goodness. I feel like preaching, but I'm going to preach in a while. Uh, that uh, our God uh, is master over the storms uh, and the seas. Uh, he's master over the land. The waters uh, that Jesus comes uh, uh, through the seas uh, and, and now he comes uh, into the hill country. Uh, look at the elevation uh, of the decks uh, that he comes from the sea uh, and he comes to Gadara and Gadara is elevated. Uh, this man uh, we are about to encounter is in an elevated state, uh, but he's tormented. Somebody said, I keep that calm. Yes, say it with me. Your king don't come and your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Look at this. Uh, prior to the text, uh, I see Jesus praying uh, in the mountains uh, because prayer will give you enough power to deal with your tomorrow. Somebody say, I pray today. I can face tomorrow. Uh, your, your prayer life uh, must be critical uh, and it must be important to you uh, because we learned on Tuesday night uh, if my people uh, who are called by my name uh, shall humble themselves, uh, uh, well, uh, if my people uh, who are called God uh, is seeking out a people uh, who are praying people, uh, he says if you're called uh, by the name of God, uh, then you're going to humble yourself. Somebody say humble yourself. Uh, and God uh, is going to exalt you. What is that? Uh, if my people, uh, this is the key uh, of true revival. If my people who are called by my name, in other words, uh, if you identify yourself with God, you have to learn how to pray. If you identify yourself with God, you're going to have to humble yourself. This is the key for revival. What is that? Uh, and he says, if you're going to pray, uh, and seek my face on this up. I will turn, turn up from their wicked ways. Does anybody say they will turn from their wicked ways? Then will I hear from heaven? What is it? Somebody say he's coming strong now. No, I, I didn't say it. I'm giving the Bible. You have it there? I didn't say it. I'm just saying what God is saying. He said, it's my people. I told you on Tuesday night uh, that sometimes the problem that we are seeing in society is a reflection of the house of God. Uh, and the Bible says judgment starts where? Where does judgment start? Anybody know? Yeah. It starts uh, with you and me. Uh, and it starts in the house of God. Uh, and if we can fix the house of God uh, and the people of God, uh, then the nations uh, or communities uh, or families uh, shall turn uh, to God. He says, uh, I need you to turn uh, from your weakness. That if you will pray on behalf of the people in the land, I'm going to fix the land. Yeah, he says, you know, then will I hear from heaven. It is not that God is not here with us. Somebody say, God answers prayer. I remember Sister Christy long ago to talk about He answers prayer. If you call upon God, He answers us. The, the problem is that then that God is answering us is that there's a war. Is about to break the curse. Somebody say, break the curse uh, over your life, uh, over your family, uh, over your generation. Uh, Jesus is on the mountain to pray. Somebody say, you see better when you're on the mountain. Uh, that which is above sees differently from that which is below. What prayer does, uh, right, is uh, Jesus uh, is going to speak peace uh, in your life. Uh, Jesus, uh, uh, you're going to see this ex has power over death, disease. Uh, and demonic forces. Uh, look at what prayer does to you. Give me this one uh, if you think it goes. Look at this one. Somebody say prayer will open up the heavens for us. Now this is my introduction. I need to text this. Yeah. The floodgates open up for us when we begin to pray. If you talk to any person who spends quality time praying, uh, they experience uh, the peace of God and the blessings of God in their life. Are you following me? You can. Now, I'm not saying uh, that those of us who pray, we don't face no sorrows. 
In fact, uh, uh, if you talk to any intercessor, uh, we face uh, most of the storms uh, and the trials and the testings. Uh, but the reason we can keep our calm uh, and our peace is because we have prayer in the book. Somebody say, make prayer happen. So prayer will open up the heavens. I told you that the heavens, that God answers prayer, but in sense of prayer, there's a war in the second heaven. There's a first heaven called atmosphere. The second heaven is uh, where the personality and powers is. The third heaven is uh, where God is seated uh, on his throne. The third heaven is where God uh, is still seated uh, on his throne. Uh, nothing takes him by surprise. Uh, he is not a kind bird. Uh, he is not surprised by crying or violence. Uh, the, and in fact, everything uh, is in his control. Uh, somebody say, oh, God uh, is large uh, and it's a prayer. He rules uh, in the affairs uh, of humanity. Somebody
is pray for our sons and daughters. The most powerful thing you can do is become a first intercessor for your children. Uh, that you are saying, God, uh, I give you permission uh, to have your way in their lives. Uh, I know sometimes uh, that we think uh, we might be stubborn uh, and we might repent against God, uh, but whenever you find a praying mother, a praying father, you're going to say to God, God, give me permission to change. Uh, so prayer will force. Uh, I'm not saying it, it, uh, it, is, it might happen. I'm saying if you keep on praying, uh, God is going to cause a massive invasion in our land. And how, how do we need, how, how we need a great impact uh, and intervention and invasion from God like never before. Look at the time span. Look at the seasons we're in now. Look at what is happening. I, I know you're seeing it now. It, it, it's, it's all over the news. It's all over the place. Uh, but I want you to know, in spite of all the bad news uh, and negative news uh, and all the violence uh, and all the madness uh, and all the chaos, uh, somebody say, God uh, is walking on top of it. He's walking on top of it. He's in control. He's large. He's God. He's about to make a hack. Somebody say make a hack attack today. What's this? This is a hack attack. What is um, what is hacking? Let me give you a definition for this. Give me that one. I want to teach you this. Because we're going to ask God to do a hack attack today. We're going to ask God to intervene like never before. A hack attack or when hackers come, for those of you who have technology, it is a uh, Technological to a security hacker is someone who explores methods for breaching defenses and exploiting weaknesses in a computer or system or network. In other words, the enemy wants to breach your defense system. Look out for that. I'm using the computer to show you that there are people who are trying to hack. When I say hack your system, I'm trying to get to that. That the enemy wants to hack your mind. You cannot have all these voices. Somebody say, I shut down every negative voice in my life. You, you cannot walk along with 5,000, 2,000 persons having a view about your life. Somebody say, today I break the curse and I silence every ungodly voice over your life. Somebody say, be careful of folks 
who are so big in your weakness. I, I don't know what to take you on and how genuine you are, but how you can cover me. Somebody say, uh, the enemy wants to highlight and reveal and exploit your weaknesses. In other words, uh, that once the enemy gets a foothold in your life, uh, he does not want to talk about your strengths uh, and your power. He wants to highlight uh, and talk about your frailties uh, and your weaknesses. Uh, but somebody says, well, when they pay for uh, somebody says, shout out, uh, my weakness. Uh, when I'm weak, uh, then I'm strong. Some of the today that say, when I'm weak, uh, then I'm strong. It was paid for in Calvary. Uh, so your sin, your shame, your guilt, everything that can cover you. There's a man of love over this church. There's a man of grace. I don't care what the enemy may say at times, but this I know a street that grace has come. The grace is grace, it's more sufficient than my strength and my weakness. Glory to God. Paul, even at times, I feel I can't move off this point. This is how you know authentic friends from fake friends. Somebody say he's preaching now. Can you handle it? I'll tell you inside so. Somebody say he's preaching now. Watch us. In other words, the enemy wants to exploit churches. He wants to hold nations and ranks. I'm going to stop right here, but there's so much more. Exploiting the weaknesses, breaching a system, a way of operation, and how things operate in your life. Look at your life. How many times you've been through things and seasons, but thank God you have your peace in God. It wasn't for God. How many of you can relate to this man? I'm preaching to nobody. I'm telling you, there are times when the enemy will have whispered in your head. Protest information gathering. 
Be careful of folks who try to gather your data. They want to find out where you're going, where you're going, what you're doing, how much you're making. Right? So be careful. I'm not saying the enemy gathers information.
and no man could tame him. Somebody said no man could tame the beast because he needed to be reprogrammed in your mind. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm chosen by God. You're chosen by God. And the reason the enemy comes against us is because you're chosen by God. I want to show you how Jesus will find you. He reprogrammed, he's going to reprogram his mind. There's going to be a network here. If you're going to hack the system back up and get back what the enemy has stolen from you all these years and all your life, look at your life and ask God. Talk to God and say, What has the enemy stolen from your life? You have to network. In other words, you have to get spiritual unity. Whenever there's unity, there's greater accomplishment. Even if the enemies are united, they fulfill their duty. When enemies come together, they can run a havoc in society. How do I know there's power in unity? When they wanted to build the Tower of Baker, they didn't know that. They just came back together in one accord and one mind, mind, mind. And that's uh, networking. Uh, so you can network uh, to do wrong things, uh, but you can network uh, to do great things. Uh, how about you network uh, and make this work? Uh, You can stand in the gap. I'm not only really talking dollars and cents. I'm talking about prayer. I'm talking about the word of God. I'm talking about the word of God. You can take a day and keep on taking it and say whatever. The picture of this life that we are about to hack back up the system. Touch the name of one more time. I said, I'm about to make a hacker attack against every enemy. Somebody say, attack with the full force. Attack in prayer. Attack in worship.